Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode, Mil walks into our room without knocking. Chmil reaches out after almost two years. Am I overreacting? Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Mil walks into our room without knocking. I've been living with Mil for over a year now and she's walked in without knocking many times. Our door has a lock but if you open it with enough force it will just open. Our baby is four months old and from the time when we first brought him home to about two months old she would walk in our room all the time when she heard the baby crying. This was really annoying because she would walk in without knocking and then tell us we were doing XYZ wrong and that's why he was crying. She's even walked in a few times while I was breastfeeding and it was super uncomfortable. About a month ago, so took baby to a pediatrician appointment and I stood home that day. She walked in as I was almost completely nude getting dressed to ask why they were taking so long. I tried to hide myself with a blanket and said I wasn't dressed and she says, sorry hun. And keeps on talking to me with the door open. How rude is that? A similar situation has happened yesterday and I'm completely over it. She has zero boundaries and this is beyond disrespectful of her. But this is just a thing in this house because even my partner will open her bedroom door when it's closed to talk to her. I have asked him to get a new lock but I also want to make sure this never happens again where she even attempts to walk in without knocking first. Do I have this conversation with her or do I ask so too? Also yes, we will be finally moving out soon. ETA, we moved in with his parents so we could save up for a house as we were in a small studio before and only two people were allowed in the apartment. We pay rent here but we will be moving out by the end of the year. His parents do not provide for us financially and we buy our own groceries slash any necessities we would need for ourselves. Get a door wedge. Get a door stopper. You can buy a rubber or wooden one for cheap. Stick it under the door and she won't be able to come in. Easy and quick way to remedy the situation. This is the way. Next time she walks in yell, you think you could give me some privacy like a normal human being. I mean it. Oh, just cover bub's ears when you do it. I like this one. A wedge under the door, a new lock, a chair etc. are all great ideas, but teamed with this one. This. She's comfortable doing it, make it uncomfortable. If nothing else, get yourself a big rubber door stop. I've seen good ones at hardware stores or office supply stores. Use it when you don't want her to barge in. Time to move out. Actually, way past time to move out. The benefits you accrue from living with your ILs do not outweigh the costs, or the damage it takes on your marriage and your emotional slash mental health. You, or DH or MIL, can attempt to justify the living arrangement several different ways, but you're still better off in two separate households. I agree. Leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You get bitter because of the mistreatment and never grow your relationship until spouse is out of their parents' influence. This here is the answer. Get a door wedge, they are cheap and she won't be able to walk in on you. Until you can move out, get wooden wedges for the door, as least two, and use them when you're in the bedroom. She will have a hard time getting in. If it's a hardwood floor, use rubber wedges. L loudly yell, what are you doing get out, and I guarantee you do that every time and she will stop. Obvi only if the baby is awake. Move. I'm not sure why you're living there but it is past time you are in a place of your own. She is never going to respect you or your space. Short term, have DH put a better lock on the door. I am not sure why you haven't TBH. 
Chinmil reaches out after almost two years. It's been almost two years since I've been NC with JNMIL. I posted about the Thanksgiving incident that just sealed the deal in 2020 and have maintained NC since. It's been the most peaceful time in my marriage and whole relationship without her being involved with every little detail that has ever happened. It's been bliss. Bullet about a month ago my husband gets a late night phone call from her and for the last year, those late night calls have meant a death in the family he needs to go back to our home state for. Not this one thankfully, she just wanted to chit chat. He said no, it's late, we have a busy day tomorrow. I'll call you back when I have a chance. He was annoyed but called her back the following morning to get it out of the way after his workout. Turns out she wanted to know if she was a good mom to him. And to let him know that she had been going to therapy and wants to work on the relationships she's royally messed up, aka, all of them at that point. And she wants to apologize to me. He had to stop her there though. He told her, I don't know how you're going to do that because you're still blocked on everything and I sure as hell am not going to be handing her the phone with you on the other end. She had a solution though, she'll write me a letter. That way I can read it or throw it away or burn it to ashes, you know whatever my little heart desires. That was about a month ago and I got the letter today, sitting there in my mailbox with her handwriting addressed to me. By this point I thought it was another empty talk to make herself look good and had forgotten about it. I took it to DH and he realized who it was from and said, oh wow. Yeah babe, oh wow. I was going to put it on my desk and just leave it alone since my anxiety was in overdrive. What could she say? Has therapy paid off? Wow she actually did it, thoughts were flowing. I caved in and opened the envelope to a three-quarters filled page of utter bullshit. My seven years old has said more thoughtful and accountable apologies for spilling water on my carpet than this woman could write in a letter she paid to send to me. The first half was her throwing herself a pity party about how SHE has been through a lot these last two years. SHE needs her family together. That's what SHE needs. Not because she is actually regretful for what she has said and done but because SHE is having a rough time and SHE needs everyone to be there for her and the more the merrier apparently. The second half of the letter. She apologized for what so obviously made me go NC which was apparently her calling me a b asterisk tch and a bad mom in like 2019. First off, I was raised by the biggest b asterisk cheese in my entire family, I am well aware I can be a b asterisk tch, I just choose not to 99% of the time. Secondly, I know I'm not a bad mom, my feelings were hurt for sure, but that small potatoes to what I'm actually upset about. She didn't apologize for telling DH to take my daughter from me, threatening to hit me, undermining me as a mother any chance she gets, demanding my time, DH's time, and DD's presence, trying to put a wedge in my relationship with DH by accusing me of cheating multiple times with my best friend. Being disrespectful as can be in my home on a holiday I didn't have to let her come for but I wanted to give her a chance to prove she could behave like a normal human and not a malicious snake, and for. Just being a rotten person to me any chance she got in the other things I've dealt with from her. Nope. None of that made it into the letter. Calling me a name and a bad mom did though, since that is obviously the worst thing she's ever done to me. Now that leaves me here, pissed that this is what she calls an apology. Pissed that I even wasted my time reading it. Pissed that I'm considering writing her back to let her know that was absolute crap and she can just forget reaching out or hoping to have a relationship with me again. I just know that reaching out or not still gives her the chance to say, well I apologized and she didn't accept it. C. Mean Dell. She is clearly the problem. I was honestly half-ass hoping she learned from therapy at least a basic apology. Do I reply and get out all the things I've been wanting to for literally years or do I let it go? DH says to do whatever I want because it's my healing and my letter to respond to or not. Which doesn't help me but kinda does knowing he has my back regardless of my decision, 
what do I do now? I think D.H. should handle this. He can say he intercepted the letter and it's incomplete and inappropriate because she hasn't even mentioned everything you said above. Keep your N.C. If you respond to this letter, she's figured out what makes you talk. D.H. has his own mess to deal with when it comes to her. She has always tossed him in the middle of anything her and I have going on. I told him a week before I went NC that she is always putting him in the middle of our problems and it's dumb because she's an adult that can talk to me, another adult. I hate having him in the middle of any situation that doesn't actually involve him. He told her that she had a lot to apologize for and she did a lot of damage so it would be a miracle if I forgave her. He told me she wanted to send a letter and I said okay she could because it was up to me to open it or not. Honestly I would reattach the letter to a get well soon card and send it back to her. Ha 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 that's a good idea. This is the way. Do not respond, remember that's what she wants. She will rev up the drama engine as soon as that response gets in her hands. What she does not want is to be ignored. So, give her that, in abundance. If that was supposed to be an apology you clearly need more therapy. Honestly that's what I thought when I finished the letter. I was in disbelief she paid for a stamp to send this to me and have the audacity to call it an apology. Maybe DH can tell this to her if she brings it up in conversation. I think this is total bait, and designed to make you look bad no matter what. Did your husband read it? I think if he ever talks to her again after this, he should tell her he read it. Not you. Don't give her the satisfaction of even knowing you read it. So then he can address her bullsh asterisk t directly. He should tell her he will proofread whatever she sends before he gives it to you, with your blessing of course, just to make sure it's an appropriate apology that addresses everything she did. If it doesn't, he can tell her he's ripping it up until the apology is satisfactory. Because if she's really willing to change, she needs to keep doing it until she gets it right. If she doesn't want to, then you know what her true intentions were, to get a reaction. Whatever you decide, I hope it leads to more years of peace and quiet. The best thing is to not reply. She knows what she did. If you want to remain NC with her, then that's what you should do. If you address this, you'll just open the door to more abuse because she'll think she won. That's all that letter means to her anyway, getting you to cave. I was an easy target for the narc behavior because I'm very caring and naive. I always want to see the best in people and would deal with way more than I should have. What she doesn't know is my spine has also began to shine like DH's and mine is immune to her especially. When de domestic violence comes into play, whether someone is hit or threat to hurt someone, that is an automatic 100% NC for you and any children you have. No exceptions. She told DH she would hit me and I didn't find out about it until years later. She hasn't met my son and my daughter rarely talks to her, only for her birthday and a holiday. DH talks to her occasionally but only like three times a month now. Their family has been dealing with a lot of death and he's trying to be there for his family in the only way he can since we live almost nine hours away and can't physically be there. He has put her in her place in numerous occasions and shuts her down if I'm brought up for any reason. Threatening any form of bodily harm makes her look like the trash monster she is and shows me that she only ever put up a front for me. I wouldn't bother replying she'll use anything you tell her as a stick to beat you with, and wail to the family about what a terrible person you are for not accepting her apology. Let your husband read the letter and clarify in his own mind that she still is who she is, and nothing has changed. My advice? Ignore the letter. MIL isn't really apologetic, you aren't really interested, so let it drop. I recommend, however, that you file the letter away. You never know if it will be of use in the future. Tell your husband she can kick rocks, and go on living your best life.
Am I overreacting? My MIL slash FIL are closing on a house that's very similar to my husband's and mine, and rather close, for their grandkids, that don't exist yet. They're empty nesters moving from a condo to a huge house. My parents just delivered my childhood piano to our home, and in the past I've talked a lot about how I want my future kids to be able to learn on it if they want. My MIL is suddenly talking about buying a piano for their home, neither her nor FIL have ever played or showed an interest in playing piano. She told my husband it's in case I or anyone else in the family wants to play piano at their house, that's a few minutes from us. I could just be reacting to a story I'm making up in my head. But I think it's kind of weird, I feel like she's trying to make her house a carbon copy of mine. Part of me thinks it's their house, their money. Another part of me thinks I should be flattered. Yet another part of me thinks my MIL is trying to play a weird version of keeping up with the Joneses with us. Should I just be flattered? You are not overreacting. Your MIL is playing the long game. She thinks that your future children will be at her house all of the time. If you have children and plan on going back to work she will expect that you will let her have them while you work. Your children will be her do-over children. What you need to find out now is where does your husband stand between you and his mother? Does he have your back or is he a mama's boy? Will he think free child care and hand your children over to his mother? You both need to sit down and discuss how you plan on dealing with his parents living so close by. What boundaries do you want to set with them? I would not let them have a key to your house. Are you going to require that they call in advance and not get in the habit of dropping by whenever it pleases them? Now is the time to discover if you will be on the same page before children enter the picture. Of course you could always consider moving. She's not flattering you, she wants her home to be her grandkids' home, as it will all be familiar. Also, all holidays need to be at your home and you invite which family members you want. When my brother and his wife announced their pregnancy, our mom told him, you need to start your own family holidays, we will be glad to come when it fits your schedule, the day before, the day of or the day after the holiday or even on a different weekend. It worked out great that way. Pink flamingos. Tacky holiday decorations all year long. Randomly start framing eye patches and hang them everywhere. Make it weird. I'd go and get some paint swatches and tell her you're deciding on what colors to paint some rooms, then choose some out and conveniently leave them out where she can see the ones you've chosen. If she paints her rooms those colors A, you know she wanted to copy you and B, she now has different colors to you. I can see why you would be at least confused about why they're doing this. I think they may be trying to set up their house so they can make it hard for you to turn them down if they invite you over when you have kids. I would either ignore it and keep it in mind, or have DH ask them why they decided to move to a house from a condo. Then if they say outright they want to see future grandkids every week, for example, you and DH can discuss it and decide if it's worth managing their expectations now before they invest in an expense like a piano. I think your instinct that she's copying you is spot on. It's a little weird but you could have some fun pointing out to her in a cheery and innocent voice, JNMIL, how odd you're buying a piano like mine. How odd you bought a house like ours. How odd your paint colors are like mine. If she does that. Do it over anything you suspect she's copying. You, you should be honest, Mill I want to be flattered I do but the truth is it's weird for me. Moving here to be closer for kids that don't exist, buying a house that looks like mine, and now copying a piano when you've never played. It's gone past flattery to straight icky. Please decorate your space to reflect you and what you love. If you continue to copy us and our home, I just won't be comfortable coming over to yours or having you at ours. Honesty, tell them honestly. If she blows up, then have some time away from her. Invite her for a movie night of single white female. 
Start planning slash saving for day care and maternity leave, the latter so you can take some extra time off, not for petty reasons, at least not completely bohaha but for those new baby cuddles, make a plan for the first few months and boundaries. Set up boundaries for pregnancy as well, plan now so you know what to do, say later and d, ear, husband doesn't turn into d, uh, husband and you're both on the same page when anyone asks. Two yes is a yes one no is a no. She's copying every move and making it so that your future kids think it's second home. I'm honestly worried about that, but feel like I sound paranoid to my husband and other family members when I put it that way. I'm also wondering if that would actually be good for my kids to have grandparents that are so involved and available if we need them. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.